All right, so today we have an interesting episode. Um, we have two rivals. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, our last our last video about appreciation versus appropriation between me and David um, went up, it was a hit so far, it's still up there if y'all wanna go check it out. But we got a little bit of clap back. Um, <laughs> although I'm actually, not on David's side for once. So I just want y'all to meet okay. about 30 minutes, 40 minutes. We can get this popping right now. So who's, who's starting? I would like to clarify my point previously. Please. After talking to Anissa. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she made it clear that, okay, there an argument can be made mm -hmm. for black americans that they have some sort of or like an argument can be made that black americans um appropriate appropriate sometimes but they are not the most egregious of all appropriate uh cultural appropriation which i agree with for sure i feel like there's definitely levels to cultural appropriation and um the primary example can be seen in like the Kardashian family and stuff like that, in which they literally take components of black culture, they publicize it, claim it as their own, or at least don't give credit, deliberately don't give credit, use it for their own fame. And then of course, like they do the whole apology for the backlash and stuff like that. And um, I will say, I will give her that point that perhaps black people do not do it the most, I think my point was that perhaps black people get away with it the most. <laughs> All right. And if you don't mind introducing yourself, by the way, real quick. Oh, hi everyone. I am Anissa Scarborough. Me and David go way back to Fredonia. We're both alums and we used to do this all the time. So <laughs> welcome. <laughs> the travel to the past with David and his wrong opinions. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I definitely hear what you're saying, though. But at the same time, I don't feel like you say the Kardashians, we get away with it. But here's the thing, like black people do it and we're not trying to profit off of it. And I think that's why I was just like, I think that's why it's more of a search. Like we're not making any money off of this. You know, somebody might have ordered that cheap dashiki off of Amazon, you know, but <laughs> <laughs> but obviously we all know it doesn't even look authentic you're just sitting there like you're trying but mm -hmm. okay we see you but I, that's i was like the the conversations that are are had because i feel like there's still this like rift between the african community and the african-american community and the caribbean community i've had a lot okay. of my caribbean friends say like oh africans americans are lazy they don't do anything because they see their families working to get here and provide this lifestyle and it just there's just like a lot of conversations that need to be had but i think denzel mentioned yesterday it's like still a part of our culture but how do we how are we respectful to the people that actually live, breathe, and move it and aren't searching for it. It's actually theirs and they can rep it, you know? When they, like, I think that's why a lot of people refer to themselves as Black Americans now. And I don't think I even use the term African Americans a lot because it's like, you say African American and then it's like a whole continent, so. <laughs> that's what I'm saying, yo. Where, where are we going with that? So I think we just stick to the term Black because you know, half the people are like, okay, let's take the DNA test. And other half of people like the DNA tests are just the government trying to get your DNA. So they're sketchy and don't take it or whatever. But I'm just like, where do we go? But I understand when you see a bunch of African Americans going in the dashikis, trying to do something, trying to find something and Africans are like, this is not it. Because one, you know, I see all the time on African Twitter, people talking about who does what the best, who has the best dances. And I'm just over here like, <laughs> well, I, all higher congratulations, you know, but it's still like, there's just so much to it. But I'm like, I feel like I see people trying and not appropriating because at the same time, like Kim Kardashian will take that dashiki and sell it and make <laughs> million when somebody's just trying to put their dashiki on with their Afro and feel like they belong to a community. They're putting on the shirt as an identity that they have once lost and now is found. That's how it seems like. 
because to me, to me, it's like, I'm even wondering, like, why is this even a thing, you know? Like, that's why, personally, I really, really liked the Black Panther movie, because I feel like this is the same thing. Like, are, are we serious? Like, to me, it's like, I was at work, and my Black American manager, me and him are cool, though, you know? He was a server. He just got bumped up. Um, ENFP, manager, whatever. He's talking to me, and he's, like... I don't even know how he got there because it, it was like seemingly so left field, but he was pretty much saying like, well, Denzel, you're not really like African-American or something like that. And I was like, uh, what? And we had like two white people over there too, like listen. <laughs> and they were just like, and he, again, me and him are cool. So like, I was just trying to hear him out. And he's like, you know, like it's a culture thing. And I'm like, no, don't start that. Like, I, my parents <laughs> were born in Africa, and I was born in New York City, the Bronx. I mm. am literally African-American. <laughs> like, don't, don't <laughs> right. like Then he's like, I mean, yes, but like, no, because, you know, and then pretty much what he was trying to say was like, you know, of course, like, just like how you're saying, like, you know, there's the difference between like those who are like just straight from like Africa or like even like first generation around there versus those who like line whose lineage goes so back they don't even know where from Africa they may have like originated kind of thing and to me it's like I mean I get that but at the same time like no like to me you're still an extension of us like we are together that's how I see it like this shouldn't even be like a thing where it's like oh you know we, even if we have a line like yo that's your that's y'all's culture this is our culture we should also still see it as an extension of each other's culture in a way because we're like family you know and so i don't know like it that that type of whole thing really got to me i was like no no more african-american versus black american versus whatever thing like we let's let's try to embrace each other finally let's accept them into africa and have them also accept us into their culture their lifestyle our culture it's our culture that's how i feel so i completely agree with y'all but i just want to keep things interesting right <laughs> <laughs> so understand that this is purely just me being devil's advocate again was it always what do you mean was, was it, it always I mean, of course it was a part of me that was always devil's advocate, but i'm just turning it up you know what i mean like i'm going extreme. um I think, oh my god I, I love that you brought up the black panther thing because even that is an example of how people who are for all intents and purposes are detached from the African culture, have literally used that movie to profit off of it. For example, Marvel Studios is the one that actually produced and developed this movie. Yes, can people from all across the African diaspora appreciate it, but are we the main ones profiting off of it? No, not necessarily. It's still going to these companies and it's still being made by Black Americans mostly, right? But most of the money still goes to these white corporations. So they're literally profiting off of African culture, or at least what is presented to be like a, un a unison or like this coming together of Black Americans and African Americans or just Africans in general. But it still goes back to Africa, like a place in Africa primarily, right? So I think that just proves that's just another example of how Americans have technically profited off of African culture yet again. You know what I mean? Like in the production of it, at least. Maybe not in its representation and how it's like what are different conversations and for us to be together and stuff like that. But even in that instance, you have people who were previously very detached from African culture suddenly wanting to reconnect to it to be able to claim that right and again i don't think that's inherently wrong i just think after when it's in conjunction with the bullying right that Afri all african americans always want to talk about like how they were bullied by black americans for being african the african booty scratcher this it and that white people. Think, it was the african it was the black <laughs> i don't understand <laughs> i think that 
is because it could easily be turned around and said like, well, Black Americans have also been alienated by African Americans or Africans in general and saying like, y'all are not part of us. Y'all are your own thing. We're our own thing, which is definitely true. But However, I don't here? think, hold on. Yeah. I don't think it can, I, I think it's, there's more of a layer on the African experience in terms of adding a physical layer to it. Right, because now it's not just verbal and emotional abuse. I have heard instances in which people were physically abused because of their, like, you know, like whether it's just like small brushes or like um, something that when they were younger and they were alienated or they were pushed away, but also there's a whole bunch of different instances in which um, I feel like even some you could i guess you could call it like gangs or whatever had formed because all the africans had gotten together and all the black americans had gotten together and sometimes there would be fights or sometimes it would just be like um sort of cliques or sometimes there would be um just that type of alienation and i feel like the same thing has happened with a lot of haitians as well but that's in caribbean culture in which they like because for example they would say like they stink or whatever right and then stuff like that builds upon one another and in florida they have a whole game or i'm not sure if they're still like running but a whole game called the zoes or zoes sorry so it's just like those sorts of things happening in the same african-american culture as well but with like black americans versus this group or that group or, or this group and like people of the same culture have to sort of band together because they have that shared experience as a sort of I wouldn't even say it's like oppression. I just feel like as a sort of alienation, I guess, in certain instances. And I feel like that's an extra layer on top of just the verbal and emotional abuse that I feel like happens on both sides. And I think even the verbal and emotional abuse may have been a poor retaliation of Africans on to Black Americans, if that makes any sense. Like afterwards, like after, like, I feel like this, should have been put in the timeline just to like give a better understanding, but I feel like I don't have enough information for that. Does that make sense or? What say you, Anissa? <laughs> you just did a whole monologue, I need to digest. Um, I think that was a lot of information that was new to me because I wasn't aware, especially like of gangs. Um, yeah. Wow. Um, and as I said, different experiences coming, be, but I wouldn't really know about like people being like physically harmed because they were African. I've heard about like heavy, like verbal harassment that's been really bad, but yeah, no. And like, I think that's another interesting part of it, but I think that comes to the question of like, if I were to ever see somebody who treated an African or African American differently. Like, why did you do that? What made you feel like they were less than? But I said this yesterday, like, I don't know, um, like what happens in like other states or whatever, but I know a lot of the media in like New York state, it just like, it doesn't portray Africa in a good light. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so I think that comes with the intentions of maybe Black Americans having this mindset because literally that's all you saw on the media, like those midnight commercials of like children who are hungry and they're like, feed the kids. And you're just like, or if you would watch like a documentary that was biased and maybe not covered correctly, you know, but you wouldn't know this growing up until you per se got woke and to say like, white people going to Africa and making documentaries and having their comments and their thoughts isn't always the best thing in the portrayal if they don't have that cultural sensitivity that mm -hmm. is needed to cover such things, you know? And so <laughs> there's just so many layers to it because I think I saw a post that was really important because the American education system is trash as we're now seeing. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, when you're in the history books, you see, like, a couple Black figures, what, Harriet Tubman, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X was too angry, um, so he didn't get put in a lot, and, mm. and Rosa Parks. 
Mm. She was the one rebellious one that they let slide through. And so when you're getting <laughs> that and you don't really get the real story of slavery, that they really went into Africa and like took kings, queens, doctors, mathematicians, like y'all weren't, they were, they want to make it look like it was a Pocahontas movie or something like that isn't what happened <laughs> at all, you know? And I know like I have white friends that like to comment, well, black people were selling black people too. And I'm like, in any civilization stuff is going on. So please be quiet and sit there and eat your food. Like we're not talking about that, but I think it's, nobody was ever taught the value of what actually was going down and who was being taken from Africa, the royalty, and the prestigious figures and the information in the culture. And that's why I'm just like, it's so frustrating because I don't feel like that would have happened if black Americans were educated properly on what Africa was, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't think I got a lot of good content until I was in my freshman year of college. You know, when they really just lay it on you, all of your primary education was a lie. And you're just sitting there <laughs> like, wow, thanks for telling me. And I'm like 18, 19, 20, like what? What are we supposed to do with that, you know? And I think that's where a lot of it come, came from is because even back in slavery times, like post-slavery, when they were like, send black people back to Africa and then they tried to enslave the Africans that were there. And I think that's why another reason why Africans don't potentially like black Americans because they would try to come back and try to treat them lesser than again. And it's just like, you're just sitting there like, but now at this age where we're educated, like how do we mend these relationships and make it better and have conversations like this of what do we do? You know, is it taking the, I wouldn't say interested. There was like a specific one for black people where you knew where you come from, but some people, it was just the celebrities boosting it, but they said it worked, but you see some celebrities are now going back and finding um, their countries and the cultures they belong to and becoming a part of that. I don't know who recently went there. They were like, I don't know. They put it on their social media. So you sort of see those relationships starting to happen. But at the same time, these are like really rich people doing this too, you know? And I just think there's a lot of privilege in these layers of who can do what to get the information of their culture without being disrespectful and ordering the dashiki off of Amazon, but I feel like a lot of people don't have the privilege and the knowledge and the information, which makes them resort to the Amazon dashiki, and you're just like, but I have a question. Would it be better for you if they, like, actually bought from uh, African and, like, were talking to them and getting the information and the history of what was going on? For sure, because I think not only is that, like, feeding into the same economy the, that you actually want to be attached to now you actually have like sources that you can say like okay this person can verify that like i'm actually trying to contribute this person i know i have talked to i have interacted with and it then becomes a continued relationship because now you you don't just go to them for shirts and stuff like that or merchandise now you can go to them for um different like services like at least in harlem it's famous for or at least it was famous for at, like hair braiding right or um people used to go there for like sage and like all this other stuff that like or like shea butter and, and things like that because they were like okay well the africans over here definitely know how you go to them for this and for this and for that and that becomes a relationship that then eases all types of um i guess damages between the black americans and the african americans because now it's like y'all are living together like y'all are doing life together right so now you have like firsthand experience and you can learn from one another so then all those biases that you may have once had like they're sort of dissipated because you're living with them and you can see their act you can see more similarities and differences and you there is no longer alienation when you actually have to see and speak with somebody from a different like background and stuff like that. I think that's one way, but that's not something that everybody can do in every place, right? And it's, it just may not be easy. And I think that's where most of the, well, more of the responsibility um, is on Africans to be able to teach Black Americans because 
it's sort of like y'all have y'all are stuck between a rock and a hard place. You don't feel like a true American because that's really like a mostly a a white kind of thing. Mm-hmm. At least that's what people regard it as. Like it's like sort of like their space, um, and then you can't really go back to the African roots as much because it's still no matter how much you try, you'll still feel sort of detached or like out of place. Like you still have moments you feel like included but because you didn't grow up in it because we had to um you were sort of adopted into it you still feel sort of out of place perpetually in a sense so you still feel like okay i don't feel right here even when i can try to connect you know what i mean at least that's what i understand from the black americans who tell me of their experience of trying to connect with like um their african roots and stuff like that maybe i'm wrong or I don't have it right, but still. Continent, you know? So what are you supposed to do? You know, <laughs> I can't see you and be like, well, David's from Ghana. So you know what? I'm going to decide I'm from there too. And just, <laughs> you know? People do what? that. Huh? People do that for sure. They say oh like, well, God. I'm not ready, this or that or whatever. So, And they do it well. Like sometimes I'll be like, <laughs> And then when someone out to them, I'm just like, wow, that was a really good job, you know? (laughs) But I think that's definitely true. Like, how do you just, like, I think one thing that I was, like, so happy that social media, like, African weddings are beautiful. Mm. Like, oh, my gosh, one of the most gorgeous things. (laughs) And I'm just like, this is me. Like, I love weddings. Like, oh, my gosh. But I could never, ever try to throw, I would never, ever throw one, even as how beautiful. Like, that just seems, like, so crazy to me you know, and even like, I guess if I found the roots in the culture and like took a DNA test and found it, I still would sort of feel like, can I really do this or no? You know what I mean? Cause it's like, mm-hmm. I feel like we're so, it's been such a long time that mm-hmm. we've been there, that since we've been there, you know? And I'm just like, and I think like, it's, it's so difficult, but at the same time, it's like, as you said, like making those ties to African people, I didn't meet I think I met one African person and I was little and he like was visiting our church and then was gone. And that was until I got to college and everybody was looking at me, like asking me like, what ethnicity are you? And I'm like African-American. And they looked at me like I was the first piece of bread in the world. <laughs> Just, and I was like, and literally like for the first time, like being a minority as an African-American, cause there were so many Caribbeans and Africans. And I was just like, <laughs> and so I was just like hmm interesting very you know but I think it was just like if you remember Park Place you know when the DJ was going on we would sit there the Africans we were sitting there like when are they going to play our music the Caribbeans are going to sit there where are they going to play our music you know African Americans like we all just sitting there looking at each other and when the African music come on everybody be lit and, and I'm just like <laughs> the dances are fire though it's easier to catch on to african-american dancing than the afro beats because i said the footwork is insane and i'm just like <laughs> you get it after a while you just gotta try and then you just get and then you just get upset all over again because i'm like we all literally could have just been vibing doing this as one but going again into those systems of oppression and the layover from slavery but it's just like how do we get back to that point of where we're all one and i just think it's like diaspora is just so big and vast you know but like, even okay. though Black Panther did go back into the white people's pockets, like the representation that it portrayed just was like, it just made me so happy to go into a movie theater and not see gang banging murders, typical stereotypes that are portrayed. And then to see Africa in the good light, you know, and the conversation that was happening between Killmonger and T'Challa, it was just like, no, people really do feel this way. Like what's going on, you know? Mm-hmm. And so just to see the light and just to see the little kids and the representation and that maybe there can be a conversation started of African-American people and what is our heritage and how do we connect back to that? Cause I don't, but just, I was just, I don't know. It just leaves me speechless still. Like I just love that movie so much, mm. but it was just like so cool. And I think that was another movie. 
um, it's been a while since it came out. Time will go so fast. But I think that was another resurgence of people like pushing out the dashikis and stuff because, you know, people are trying to do Wakanda forever. And so, you know, some companies were authentic with it. Some of them obviously were not. But, you know, I think they did it. I know on my Facebook, definitely for a while there, like there was so many different companies selling African style mm-hmm. clothing and whatnot. And I'm just like, yo, this is actually fire, but I didn't, I didn't participate in the purchasing. Um, but I think, mm, mm-hmm. I, th- I think Black people, Black Americans have such a, I don't know, because, because I don't know if it's like appreciation, I guess. It's like toes the line, right? Like back to what we were talking about yesterday, like Black Americans, have such a unique and specific way of towing the line between appreciation and appropriation sometimes that I think because y'all can always get down and y'all make everything cool, I think y'all are in a very cool space where you can actually enjoy two other cultures that you may or may not be directly involved in. So like, I think when it comes to African culture, y'all can still get down because at least as far as I know it, yes, there are some Africans who try to alienate or say like, that's y'all over there because of their personal experience. But then I think there's also a whole nother group where there are Africans who are very inviting and say like, yo, come through, we accept y'all, y'all are family kind of thing. And I feel like the same thing happens with Caribbean culture in which there's one section who alienates and then there's a whole nother section that's like, nah, come through. Like we want y'all over here. So then you guys get to explore Caribbean culture and African culture. And then it goes back to the point of where I think value their own experience in America at as they should or can so now you're still getting to like sort of mix and mesh the two just being able to learn because there are groups that will willingly and largely accept y'all as one of their own as well right so it's not like it's a complete alienation there's definitely a lot of groups out here a lot of people out here from each section that's just like yo you're one of us you look like us your family kind of thing, right? At least that's what I've experienced, at least like in different areas and stuff like that. And I think it's cool because you can say the same thing about Africans and like American culture and Africans diving into Caribbean culture. You can just see the connections and it's now more than just one singular culture. It's three different parts of still, we can still have a largely shared experience it's even though it may be very different from what we usually know right and I think there's beauty in that too does it then highlight the separation or distinguish like where we're different yes but it also distinguishes where we're similar as well because there's still a lot of different things that translate across all cultures or subcultures I guess of the black or like African diaspora right so I feel like that's really cool as well despite the small differences i think superficially black people are different but fundamentally black people everywhere are are very similar if that makes any sense well definitely i think your comics highlight that a lot you know because you'll post a comic and everybody's like oh wow do we all live the same life you know and this is coming from caribbean (laughs) africans africans americans we're just sitting here like how are we miles and miles away from each other and our parents still doing the same stuff <laughs> right i don't know it's somehow we all have like a shared experience right some, um but yeah i think another thing i want to discuss is black people and asian culture because there are definitely themes at least in hip-hop culture right which is largely part of the black american experience that are borrowed from like for example the kimono is a huge one right or like kung fu movies and stuff like that like of obviously i don't think that black people are trying to totally claim it as their own but i guess you could say we've tried to remix it in a way um 
And again, to me, that sort of like toes the line between appreciation and appropriation, because I feel like nobody's out here really thinking that um, Black Americans are trying to claim the kimono as their own. But the way that we use it sort of makes it seem like, oh, we've elevated this in our own way. And that sort of kind of creates to me a sort of like underlying tone that like, okay, that's y'all's, but this elevated part, like this part that we remixed and made our own, this is ours over here because we did it like this and nobody can do it like that because, you know, black people are cool just like that. You know what I mean? I feel like there's a tone there that isn't necessarily always explicitly or verbally communicated, but I think in the way that it's shown or portrayed, it can come off that way. Do music videos or um, fashion expos and stuff like that, of course, all fashion is up for uh, available because it's art and stuff like that. And it's up for like um, people to change or like tonally um, remix or whatever. But I feel like more credit should be given to the originators at, at least, or like more inclusion should be given to the originators if that's the case. I feel like you're coming from. I definitely like looking back on music videos and stuff like that. And I remember you mentioned in the video, the previous video, um, like Kung Fu Kenny and the Wu Tang Clan. But I don't feel. I don't know. Maybe you saw it in a different light. But I don't feel like the that use of it, like made black people start dipping into Asian culture. I think you might have put this in yesterday. I feel like we put people on. You know, I don't feel like it was just like <sighs> if hmm, let me see. It's sort of difficult. I would say like celebrities most definitely with their use of some things like that. I'm trying to remember in the you see right through me video, Nicki Minaj, I know she definitely had an Asian theme, but I'm not sure if she actually has ties to Asian culture. I don't think so. I know she reps Trini, but I don't know if I saw somewhere that she actually does have like Asian heritage, but I'm not sure about that. But I definitely, there was like, that music video was definitely Asian theme because Michael J. White, he, I don't really know the right term. What? I don't, he practices something. I don't know what it is specifically, mm -hmm. but it is like an Asian fighting style. So he was in like the music video doing his thing or whatever, you know? And so, you know, I feel like some black people practice in the arts. And so that's where they come from with the garb and stuff like that. Okay. And so that's just them, I feel like embracing it. But the same thing with like the Asian culture, I see we use it. But at the same time, it's just like, I don't feel like it's another point of where we're profiting off of it. You know, I feel like, yeah, you can say like, oh, this is where it comes from or whatever. But the celebrities are, mind you. But I feel like it's just like, uh, not maybe like a filter. Like, you know how we find it and then it goes out. You know how they say like black people, prob a black person probably did it first. I think <laughs> I think it might be some of that, but I definitely see the appropriating, especially in celebrities. Like a, back in the day, I definitely, there was definitely a lot of that. And even like in, but I think this might've been in young girls' hairstyles, like with the little chopsticks, you know, they put their bun up in the hair and do like that. But I think it might've calmed down, like back in the day, most definitely. Well, yeah, like, I think it definitely calmed down. But I think another, just to like, sort of like flip it, there's a bunch of movies in which there's a white person, right, who is the star of the movie or the show or whatever it is, practicing martial arts and beating or like overcoming. A punk, you know what I mean? Okay. <laughs> in which, like, they, they're the person who's, like, the master, even though they learned it from a totally different culture. However, they're the hero of the story. They're the person that you look at. You know what I mean? In the same way, I feel like Black people, whether in the past or most, more recently, have also put themselves in a similar position, not necessarily in movies. I mean, actually in movies, in a couple movies back in the day, but, but in a similar position in which, like, yes, they've 
borrowed from this culture. However, they're the person that we should look at and they're the person that we marvel at, which then still is kind of what white people do in their appropriation, except we, we add a little flavor to it, <laughs> in my opinion. Like, I remember movies like, uh, what's it called? Um, Bruce Leroy or like uh, Rumble in the Bronx and stuff like that. You know what I mean? In which like there's black protagonists who, if you were to switch it out with a white person, we could easily say, oh, that's cultural appropriation because we see a white person potentially profiting off of the culture and the martial arts style of a totally different culture. That was in um, The Get Down too. <clears throat> like, I don't know if y'all, Watch the good one from Netflix. Um, Shao, Shaolin. He was mm -hmm. like known as like Kung Fu dude and everything. <laughs> and I was like, uh, I loved it though. I loved it. But at I the same time, you, you, we know like, if you think about it, you, you understand like, okay, that's definitely from an Asian culture. However, the way that it was portrayed made it seem like, oh yeah, this is definitely a Bronx kind of theme. Yeah, you know I mean? yeah, and the yeah. Same thing, for Wu Tang, in which, like, yes, we understand that it's from, it's borrowing culturally from the Asian culture, but the way that it's portrayed is like, oh yeah, these are the guys, like these are the guys, like you don't want to mess with because you know they get down with, like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just the sort of like it's part of the branding, and I think branding in some way of some form profits, even though it may not be monetarily. Like, like it doesn't have to always involve money there's still some sort of value that one can gain by borrowing or taking from another culture that can add to itself and put itself in the forefront, if that makes any sense. Okay, but like, is that more of, since you like to flip scripts, a cultural <laughs> exchange or appropriating? Because I feel like, you see what white people do, like you have a chicken, they'll take the chicken from you and say, this is my chicken. You know, black people are like, ah, I see your chicken. Let me make your chicken better, put some seasoning on it, cook it up and be like, you see that chicken? Now look at it, you know? Yeah. You think for an exchange that's, that's to occur, kind of, again, it has to be something that both ends are getting. They're like, trying to make their hair nappy. You said that yesterday. There you go. You right. <laughs> but we didn't tell them to do that though. We didn't tell them to do that. They didn't get the okay for that. They just went ahead and did it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think again it, it's like going right back again to like uh the whole thing like is that just appreciation or is that appropriation and then i feel like sometimes you know at least going down to like what david was saying i think you're right like technically black people yeah we like we can in our appreciating we can uh we can appropriate <clears throat> But I also like what Nisa said about how we were not doing it like the way that other people do it. And maybe that's why, as David said, like, you know, black people don't like they get away with it more. It's because like, if we do it, we're like, just like what you just said, like, you know, like, we take, oh yeah, that Kung Fu thing. And again, we're not saying like, this is us or something, but you know, like, you know where it's from. Well, again, like white people, like they take it. And it's like this is how it is. <laughs> and they commercialize it in that way and everything. And I feel like that's one of like the big differences, and that's why it's like, yo, like, all right, like even if we were ill-intended when we did ours, we were really low-key with it. But you just <laughs> completely stole, like, you just came in, you left the hole in the wall, you you left the vault open. You didn't just take like a, a few bags of money. You, you robbed the whole entire vault. <laughs> and then you're talking about, I don't know what you talk about. This is ours. It's like, no, it's not. 